Hello and welcome once again to 88 Angel Street, Newtown. We have for you yet another very exciting day because today we are blowing the soil into the green roof. And I'm also going to share with you our Japanese flamethrower technique, which we've used to preserve the exterior timber. So let's get started. So this is our Su Shugi Barn burnt timber cladding, but before I get onto that, I want to tell you about what's behind it. Now we've got a timber framed wall. In timber framed walls, insulation is very important. Otherwise it's like living in a paper bag. So we have two kinds of insulation in this wall. The first is this bat, which is an acoustic and thermal insulation. It not only acts as a big blanket, it's also high density, so it provides an acoustic barrier from any ambient noise, so it's nice and quiet in your bedroom. And we've not only insulated the external walls, we've also put these acoustic bats in every wall and floor of the house. The second layer is this, which is a radiant insulation. Now for radiant insulation to work properly, it can't have anything touching the face because then it come, becomes conductive. So we've got a cavity in the wall which not only introduces an air break, it also helps with long-term waterproofing and it allows our radiant insulation to wrap right around the building to prevent any thermal bridging and give a really good barrier to any radiant heat that might otherwise come inside. Now, onto our Su Shugi Barn burnt timber cladding. You might wonder, what is this guy doing burning timber and sticking it on the house? Well, let me tell you. Thousands of years ago, the Japanese discovered that burnt timber lasts a lot longer outside than raw timber. Why is this? Well, when timber rots, it doesn't just fall apart. It's generally being eaten either by insects or by microbial organisms. So why don't these critters like eating the burnt timber? Well, do you like your dinner burnt? I don't, neither do microbial organisms. That's one thing we have in common. So if you have this layer of charred wood over the nice, juicy, nutrient-rich timber inside, it will protect it for 80 to 100 years. So here's our promised flamethrower technique. Lovely piece of Cypress pine, simply get it to the right intensity. Then once it's burned, we use a secret finishing technique to bring it back to a lovely rich golden hue which will last for years to come. I'm here with Stuart, our landscaper extraordinaire, who's doing the green roofs for us, and we're going to tell you about the system we're using to build them. Now, as I explained in the previous episode, we've used these metal clad roof panels. All the joints of those, we've done a metal flashing and fully sealed it. And then on top of that, we've waterproofed it. We've done a three coat, low VOC waterproofing system, which is really belts and braces. And then on top of that, becomes Stuart's domain. Tell us what you've done, Stu. Okay, so on top of the, the waterproofing layer, we have a layer of geotech, which in itself again protects the, the waterproofing layer. On top of that, we have this VersiCell drainage system, which not only allows water to run freely underneath and get away, so we don't have water pooling on top of the roof, it also has these little wells which fill up with water. Now that becomes a reservoir for the plants to use. So we have 100 to 150 mils of uh, lightweight garden mix on top, so All of it has is, uh, a sample of the lightweight mix. And this has got um, ash, industrial waste product ash. We like that stuff, don't we? <laughs> okay, so our lightweight planter mix contains a number of things. The first of which is this uh, ash that's a recycled product from some power plants. And what it does is it allows the soil to be lightweight. It 
uh, adds minerals to the soil for the plants. It allows the soil to be free draining so we don't end, up, don't end up with water sitting in the soil. What we've done with the soil is we've got a couple of layers of this geotech that I mentioned before and we've basically bagged the whole soil mix in geotech. So that'll sit on top of there, allow the water to sit underneath. The roots can go through, suck the water up and this lovely mineral rich soil will provide foods for our plant. That's right. Then our steeper roofs are a different story. This system at 35 degrees would not last very long. So what have we done there, Stu? Well, we've installed a, a thinner layer drainage system, which in, in, in essence does the same thing as the thicker one. It allows water to free drain underneath, and it also has these tiny little wells to store a bit of water. Now it also has the geotech built in, so that separates the soil from the, the roof panels, so we don't end up with roots growing into the waterproofing. Now on top of that, we have a new system which allows us to uh, allows us to put the soil on the slopey roofs, and that's a concertina system like that. So it sits suspended by these orange ropes and creates these little voids where we put the soil in. Now this is suspended from steel beams which are integral to the structure, so that's going to last forever. Well, as Peter Cundall used to say, that's your lot for the week. So thanks very much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you next time when we'll move back into the interiors and show you what's going on there. See you then.